Today we're gonna to continue the True Sound Studios tour and I'm gonna show you the storage room. I'm gonna show you all the mics, the stands, the cables, the gear and instruments that is all stored back there. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wiesna and as always we are here at my studio at True Sound Studios and today is part two of the studio tour where I show you guys the storage room. Now you might be saying, well, it's just a storage room, but you know, this is where I keep all the goodies, you know, it's all the microphones and cables and the other things that really help contribute to the sound of True Sound Studios. So the storage room is actually the room that separates the control room from the live room. It's essentially like the dead air space that really helps not let the sound transfer from the control room to the live room and vice versa. So I do have to mention the camera I use to get this really wide angle look so that you guys can see the storage room because it is kind of small. Unfortunately it has some pretty bad audio even with the good microphone on it. So just know that I'm sorry about the bad audio but you guys will be able to still hear and understand everything. Alright so let's go check out the storage room. Okay so if we go from the control room into the storage room this is the room that separates the control room from the live room. Obviously, this is where all the stuff that isn't necessarily used every single day um, is all stored in here. Um, everything from microphones to cables, mic clips, you know, you name it. Uh, we got stands and just cases. And really, this is where everything is stored um, for the most part, just because there isn't much storage out in the control room. So if we start up top, this is an old Ludwig snare drum. Uh, this is from 1969. And that is a Pearl Export snare drum. Not the most amazing drum in the world, but with the right amount of dampening, um, I can actually make it sound like like an old fat sounding snare drum. So these are probably the most used snare drums. So then obviously you got pillows for dampening. And then with the toms, this is a 14 inch tom. This is a 13 inch tom. That is a 12 inch tom. And then that is a 10 inch. And then over here, uh, a big 16 inch floor tom. And then in the back corner over here, uh, two more snare drums. Uh, really don't use those as much. Kind of uh, this one you can see just doesn't even have the lugs in it. Um, really just some extra parts. The top snare there is a really, really cheap one I bought like at a garage sale. But um, you never know when you, uh, you, never, you never know when you want to experiment and screw up a drum or do whatever. So if we go down here a little bit, so obviously you got a whole bunch of cleaning supplies, uh, water. I drink a lot of water during sessions. Uh, I always seem to talk quite a bit. Um, you know, the cleaning supplies, uh, the deoxit. This stuff is amazing at cleaning electrical connections. Probably something I use um, well, considering this is like my third can, this one's about half gone. Um, some WD-40, you know, for those squeaky drum pedals. Um, this is isopropyl alcohol, so rubbing alcohol. This is great also to clean um, connections, and I also use that to clean off Sharpie markers when I write on stuff. Um, and some air uh, symbol cleaner back here. Some candles and uh, some essential oils, and then these are very, very important, especially when people are sick. Some disinfecting wipes. So then down here, uh, this is a whole bunch of like small little parts. Um, some more guitar hangers. These are a whole bunch of quarter inch TRS connections and TS. Adapters, power adapters. Um, just some random stuff back there. Some AA, charge, uh, AA battery chargers. Some more RAM, little cables and some Hey, these are uh, monkeys in a barrel or whatever you call them. And then some AA batteries. Now these batteries I use um, mainly for that iRig Pro Duo. Um, I use it quite a bit on a lot of stuff. So it runs on AA batteries, so I got a lot of rechargeables. And down here, this is uh, this is some more drum stuff. Now these are like smaller percussion. We got some claves, uh, cowbells, little mini tambourines, shakers. So in here, this is more like vocal stuff, pop filters and extra last bands for the shock mounts down here um, as you can see a whole bunch of drum hardware just really it does are just extra parts you never know when you need stuff like that 
And then some more drum parts. You got cushions, snare wires, uh, things like that. And then below this, uh, this is the router for the studio. Um, this is the security system recorder. So this records all the security cameras in here. Got a good old cordless vacuum for obviously the messy people that come into the studio. Now in here, these are just containers of just CDs that I've burned over the years. Just can't throw them away. <laughs> um, down here, we got some extra mic. These are more like uh, vocal microphones when we're doing maybe rough recordings or stuff like that, but just some extra mics. So in here, this is the whole uh, mic clip section. Uh, everything that you can imagine, different mic clips, different sizes. Um, including drum mounts on there. Um, here's all my, well, these are all the shock mounts that are not being used right now for all the condenser microphones. So then up top here, um, this is mic parts, so this is mic clip parts. So just a whole bunch of the little ends, threaders, you know, you name it. Um, these are mic covers, so when I have all the mics set up, you know, maybe we got a whole band in here, um, and it might be over the course of a couple weeks. At night, I put these covers on the mics to make sure that no dust gets into them. Uh, lav mics for some of the video stuff if I have multiple people over, but I actually don't use these lav mics as much, uh, mainly because I got so many other microphones for things like that. Uh, down here, these are all the triggers for um, when we are, you know, miking up a drum kit and we want to electronically trigger them with a trigger unit. You know, nothing too special about those. It's just really something I almost never use, but you know, if you need them, I got them. This is a little teeny tiny. This is cool. This is a really old little reel to reel tape recorder. Um, this is kind of fun to use if, you know, we're trying to go for that really old vintagey sound, maybe to make a fun intro out of or something. Um, love using that. It's battery powered. It's the only bad part of it. And then last, just headphone connections, splitters, extension cables. Um, and then over here, we got hard drives. Uh, these are some brand new crucial 500 gig hard drives. I obviously haven't installed them yet. And oh gosh, in here, these are some really old hard drives. Um, they're all archived. And these are just the drives that I just recently went through just to see if uh, there's anything relevant on here to keep. And there wasn't. And probably a couple terabytes worth of storage. Nothing worth saving, unfortunately. We got our microphones. Now, most of these cases have multiple microphones in them. So, looking here, um, so we got the AKG D112, um, an Audix D6. Obviously, these are great um, microphones for kick drum or big toms or bass cabinets. Um, these are the little uh, Shure Beta 98s, I believe these are. Um, so I got two of those. I really love these on like smaller toms. And then got a couple of uh, these Audix F10 uh, mics, I believe these are. Yeah. Um, these are kind of like backup mics um, if maybe I have way too many uh, toms on a particular drum kit. So that's one case. Put this back over here. Um, pull out this guy. So these are like condenser mics. Uh, they're not all in here right now, but... So I got two of these Samson CO1 condenser mics. Uh, if you guys have seen any of my other videos, um, I use these quite a bit just because they are $70 brand new for one microphone. And, you know, compared to like this, like the Rode NT1A, um, really, <laughs> they're fairly comparable. Um, just so good to be able to use these and show you guys what, you know, an inexpensive microphone really can sound like in the end but and then I, I do have two um, Rode NT1As the other ones in the studio right now um, so yeah I got four condenser mics so we'll put this guy away pull out this now these are more like dynamic microphones 
So um, got the Audix i5, um, which is very similar to like the Shure SM57, but I like this better on snare drum than the SM57. Um, so I got three SM57s, um, mainly use like these for snare drum, it's like snare top, snare bottom. Got a couple of these for, I don't know, vocals, guitar cabs, you know, it kind of works on a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this is a Shure microphone, I'm not, oh here it is, it's a uh, 560. Um, this is actually meant as a lavalier, you know, that's something that... Something you put like, like here to talk. But this is actually really great for um, harmonica. Can't say I record too much harmonica, but it is another cool microphone to have. Um, and then this like old Sony microphone, it actually kind of sounds terrible, but um, it's nice to put on like a guitar cab if you, um, you know, you're trying to intentionally make some bad sounding recording, maybe for like a little effect or something. And then uh, here, put some sickle gel just to keep, um, keep these dry, you know, keep the humidity out of here. Then last, some uh, smaller condenser microphones. Um, so I got two of these Audix F15 microphones. Obviously these are small diaphragm condenser mics. And then I got this AKG C451EB. Um, you can actually change the the capsule out on this. Um, I like this on like hi-hat, it sounds really good. Very, very crispy. Um, so I'll throw this guy away. This is this is my main microphone, it's actually in the other room, but this is the Sterling Audio Oceanway ST6050 microphone. Pretty much the mic I use on um, vocals almost every single day. And then, Got the MXL 4000. Now this has been modded with, um, <laughs> I can never remember the name of the mod, but if I uh, remember it, I'll put it in the link of this video. But this is great because it has different polar patterns on it. I love this on acoustic guitar, or maybe if I'm trying to mic up the room. Um, really like this microphone. It actually sounds fairly comparable to that um, Sterling Audio microphone that I use on vocals. And then we'll we'll open up some of these mics that I didn't actually get to. So, got the SM58, obviously great for vocals. Um, this is a PV microphone. Well, I can't actually see a model number on here, but I actually like this because it's um, it's a fairly bright microphone. Um, really kind of nice on vocals and got this old relic. This is like a really old microphone. Um, once again, just fun for some cool effects. And then this is an Audio-Technica wireless microphone. Now, obviously I wouldn't use wireless in the studio, but one day I intend to take this apart and see if I can use it as a... Uh, you know, plug it in and use it as a regular mic. So then in here, um, got the DBX. Uh, this is like a um, test microphone. I forget what it's actually called, but um, you know, if you wanted to calibrate your room or your speakers or something like that, this is uh, that's the mic I use for that. So in here, this is um, a boundary microphone. This is actually the Shure Beta 93, I believe. Um, a condenser mic. This I actually use in kick drum quite a bit. Um, really sounds it's very interesting what it sounds like you get a ton of attack on it and actually there's a, a a large amount of bottom end but not like a large you know your typical like dynamic microphone that you might use on a kick drum and then last this old ev microphone that i kind of rebuilt and this thing sounds um very old. It's really cool for vocal effects. Um, no, you know, no protection on that diaphragm right there. So you got to be really careful. Um, definitely use a good pop filter on that thing. So that is the mics. Okay, so then moving on from our microphones down here. Um, this is, uh, I do have a Blue Bird microphone. Um, it's actually in the ISO cab, which I'll get to. And then uh, in here we got just some guitar and just metal parts for things that I build or stands and so in here just got a flashlight and some just some random stuff nothing too exciting uh, a security camera that's Wi-Fi controlled if I have clients in here that I don't trust good old glue gun um, another percussion instrument that obviously didn't make it into its correct area 
Uh, just some tools, um, a very important drill. Got to have one of these in the studio. Always fixing other people's crap. <laughs> Um, whole bunch of tambourines down here. Now this is a guero, I believe. Um, I call it a fish. This is actually my dad's. This is probably from the 70s. As you can see, he drew all over it. Um, just a kick drum pedal, a couple magazines back there. Then moving on down here, uh, this is a, this was a bass cab. This was a four by 10 bass cab. So I took this thing apart when I used to DJ quite a bit. And um, I was intending on using this as like a DJ live rig type thing. Got an Antares auto tune up top there. Um, the tablet would sit right up here on a stand the little mixer goes right here and you can put whatever over here and then down here in the back this whole thing's been hollowed out um, got a wireless microphone system going on a little vent uh, this controls some of the lighting on here open this up all the cables all the mics boxes adapters all that stuff's in there then obviously you can lock this up um, to bring it to a venue just in, you know, so nobody steals your expensive stuff. Um, got some connections on the side of it over here. And then up front, what I did is I actually cut the, the baskets, the back of the actual speakers off. So there's no magnets. So the speakers are probably only an inch and a half thick. And I actually put green LEDs all around it. So it just kind of one of those things that, you know, I thought I was going to use a little bit more often, but really I, I think I only used it once. So, but I still keep it around because who knows? And then as part of the DJ package, I have two powered Harbinger 15 inch, um, I think these are 800 watts um, speakers that, you know, yes, I have these for DJing or, you know, you know, if I want to bring them to a party and but I also might use them in the studio when bands are tracking live and you know somebody wants just a louder personal monitor over you know headphones um, so I do keep these in here I can't say they get used too much but oh also I use these if we're gonna do live mixes I'll set up these and kind of like recreate a sound system in the studio to make a little better mix then over here this is a 2 by 12 cab now as you can see how thick this thing is this is a inch and a quarter real plywood it's not chipboard um, there is a green back and a vintage 30 in here on the actually the back side of it there's two independent connections you can pick either speaker to use um, so you can either use the green back or you can use the vintage 30 to kind of give you an option um, on guitar tone and then finally over here this is a little stand for the mixer for the drummer when they are drumming and can you know kind of mix their own headphone mix so then if we end up in this corner over here you can see there's some more stands and weights for stands and stuff like that um, we come back here, and I apologize for the lighting. It's probably not going to be great, but um, charger for the drill. This is actually the power supply for the lights in here. Uh, whole little switch bank. These turn on all the different cameras, the, the cooling fans, uh, lighting out in the studio. Then we got a backup battery for the main recording computer, which is right here. So this is the recording computer. Um, there's actually a whole video on this entire computer, so I'll link this in the description of this video and also end up at the end of the video, a little clickable link. Um, and yeah, that's the recording computer. It's obviously back in the storage room to keep it quiet. Okay, so now we will get to the other wall over here, and as you can see, this is a lot more of the bigger, heavier stuff. So we will start with this huge box. This is two and a half feet wide by two and a half feet deep and by four feet high. And what this is, is an isolation cab. It has a single vintage 30 12 inch guitar speaker in there with a movable um, mic system in there. I will do a separate video on this entire guitar isolation cab because it is really cool and it sounds amazing. And actually all the guitars that I record go through this isolation cab. So on top of the isolation cab, you can see a whole bunch of extra drum heads. I love having extra 
you know, options and sound, especially when people bring in their drums and they, they might not sound very good. Um, and then a whole bunch of little pieces of rubber um, to kind of isolate things if, um, you know, something's vibrating or, you know, whatever. It just kind of comes in handy. Um, and then up top here, you can see we got obviously more drums. This is more of like the kind of like the rock sound if you're really going for that like traditional pop rock sound. That's a little bit more vintage-y sounding, um, not as much click on the attack, a little bit more rounder and, and sustains a little bit longer. Um, that's actually the Curve vocal booth uh, that I did the video on. If you haven't seen that, uh, I will also link that. And then these are actually all of my automated mic controllers. So just like the Dynamount, before Dynamount came out, probably about six years ago, seven years ago, I, it might even be longer than that. I made, essentially, it's just, it's a mic stand that just moves and, you know, some of these only move in one direction, some of these move in two. Um, the one back there, is actually for kick drum. It'll pull a kick drum mic in and out of the kick. Uh, this one I use for acoustic guitar. It'll slide back and forth so you can get, you know, a better sound on acoustic guitar. Um, this one I use on snare drum. This will actually move the mic in and out of the snare drum and then change the pitch at the very end here. You can actually adjust the pitch of the microphone. And then finally, this one just moves up and down. Can't really do this one-handed. Um, but this is really cool um, on a whole bunch of different things, especially guitar cab. Now, once again, um, I have four of these, plus there's another one inside the isolation cab. So I'm gonna do a totally separate video on that. So over here, um, obviously a whole bunch of mic stands. Now, these are just the mic stands that are not set up. There's obviously, there's even more in the control room, but I'm using them for video right now. You know, you got some of your like smaller stands. There's big stands in here, there's cheap stands, there's some extremely heavy duty ones like this. Then down here, this mess of steel is all of the drum hardware. Cymbal stands, you know, straight, boom, you name it. Um, just a ton of hardware in there. And I keep all those stands 100% working because um, I hate having broken stuff around. Um, down here, I got a fan, uh, often use that for drummers. In here is a whole bunch of extra foam and fabric just in case you need it for dampening drums or you just never know. Um, I use that stuff quite a bit. Um, blankets, once again, for isolating, dampening things. Uh, this is a laptop stand, got a, a case for, you know, if you want to carry on mics. Uh, kick drum pedal, it's a DW5000 pedal in there. Um, up top, you can see that's where I store cymbals. It's a nice little like cubby up top there. This is actually the back wall of the live room. And then we got some like drum ring dampeners, a little a little bell symbol, and then a whole bunch of headphones. Um, you know, you never know when you're gonna have choirs or gang vocals in here, all different types. So these are all the long XLR cables, um, obviously a true sound sign. Then we got some stools for extra seating if we need it. Then we got some TV trays for laptop stands or places for people to eat or whatever. And then over here, these are all the shorter XLR cables. And then finally, the last section over here is just some extra cables that we got. So these are pretty much all just speaker cables for guitar cabs and, you know, patching and, you know, you name it, bass cabs, speaker cabs. Um, and then over here, we got just some extra speaker cable. We got different adapter cables, MIDI cables, guitar cables, uh, word clock cables, you know, just really any of the extra stuff that I might use a little bit more often. And then finally, this is like my little area of things that people have given me over time. Um, and I, I feel bad, <laughs> you know, getting rid of it or throwing it in a box. So I kind of started creating this little, this little area. Once again, that is the storage room here at True Sound Studio. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do have any questions about any of the other things that I've mentioned in this video, please go ahead and leave me a comment. Otherwise, we're going to do one more video where I'm going to show you guys the live room and that'll complete the whole tour section of True Sound Studios. So if you guys like this video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. Follow us on Instagram for daily posts. You can find the beats that I make right here at the studio on our SoundCloud page.
True Sound Studios also mixes and masters your tracks. So once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Wiesna, we're at True Sound Studios, and True Sound Studios is in your ears. Oh,